They'll bring it to Desaway, way outside, top of the key. Ugo gives it up to Andy Young, who sets it back to the midcourt area. Henry out on him defensively. Cowboys really extending the Lobo defense here. Here's Roberts, gets a pick, backs off, can't use it as he gets the double team. Now takes the end line, spin, jump past top of the key, Young. Outside Sawyer for three. Good! Sawyer with 18. Roberts with 17. And French with 10 were the offensive sparks. Right side, outside, long. Feeds Thomas down low, turn around, right hand on the way. Will not go. Rebound, Justin French. And he got hacked in the back by Shields that time. Sawyer down the lane. Sawyer scoop a bounce pass to Desaway. Bank it up and in. Oh, what a pass by Greg Sawyer. Yep, Greg went coast to coast with the play, got under the hoop, and uh, somebody left to Udgo, I think it was Thomas, wide open. French at the midcourt area to Sawyer. Left side outside to Roberts, catches it on the run and sets it back to the midcourt area. He's got it on the dribble. Ten seconds on the shot clock. He's going to go on long. In deep, Ron puts it up and in, and he's fouled. He is impossible to stop tonight. Well, there's nobody in that red uniform that can stop him, I assure you of that. But it was the Cowboy defense that did it, holding New Mexico to 27 points below its season average. Gibson at the top, midcourt area. Now 18 seconds on the shot clock. He's got Roberts on him defensively. Trying to direct traffic as Henry gets a pick, but Young fights through it. In the corner to Long, he couldn't get free of French. Right side, outside Gibson. Gibson gets the double team, but puts it back top of the key to Long. Now to Gibson, two on the shot clock. Passes outside. They're not going to get it away. The Cowboys defend for 35 seconds. <laughs> Boy, the Cowboys are jacked up. They're trying to get the crowd pumped up. You don't see basketball very often where defense gets a crowd pumped up, but that's what these kids do. That high was followed by the Pokes' lowest, darkest period of the season. They would lose their next three games at BYU and Utah and at home, Colorado State. It would be the season's longest losing streak, but it would be the season's turning point from that dark period. The Pokes gained new resolve and would win seven of their last nine regular season games, including three on the road. During that final stretch, there were two memorable victories. The first was at Laramie in early February. Rick Majerus and his Utah Utes came to the AA, as highly touted as any team in the country, the nation's fifth-ranked team. The Utah game was close throughout the first half, with the Cowboys trailing by four at the break. At the top, they get it to Miller. Miller tries to work against Sawyer. Spinning in the lane, jump right hand, that will not go. Rebound, Jeff Allen at Goliak off the board. Great position by Jeff Allen that time. He has come to play, David. Here's Roberts with a brilliant move. Bank it up and in. The Cowboys are attacking. 10-10, the score is tied. Here's Roberts down the lane. Bank that up, no call. Tipped up and in, away. Cowboy basketball as Young will bring it out of backcourt. And just as soon as it's dead, Jerron Roberts will be into the game. Now Young with it right side. He'll rise from 18. That's in and out, no good. Jeff Allen goes and gets the rebound. Fall away, right hand, good! Oh, he is playing so well, David. Inspired basketball by Jeff. This is his last weekend in the double-A, and he's playing like it. 4.42 to play here in the first half. Roberts across the timeline. Caton picks him up at the top of the key. Trying to get a pick from Washington. Uses it down the lane for the jam. What can you say? This double-A crowd is on its feet. He just went right to the hole, and that's a major, major jam. The Utes, however, showed some muscle early in the second half to build an 11-point lead and appeared on their way to breaking a three-game losing streak at Laramie. But, keyed by Jerron Roberts, the Cowboys came storming back, catching Utah with eight minutes left. Now in the corner, they go to Andy Young. Young tries the lane. Good pass, Roberts, back door, lay it up and in, and he's fouled. That is great vision by Andy Young that time because he was going one way and he just caught Jerron streaking to the basket on the baseline from the left side and he gave him a bullet pass and the Cowboys get a three-point opportunity here. 
Miller with it, left side, outside, top of the key. Caton puts one man in the air, steps in for a 15-footer, had it slapped away. It looked like it might have come down with it. Then Doliak hit in the back, and the Cowboys bring it back the other way. Here's Roberts. He's got Hanson to beat. In deep, lay it up, got it, and he's fouled. At the top, Jackson, Utah, with a three-point lead, 46-43. Cowboys digging in. Jackson for three. That's no good. Rebound inside, Justin French. Utah's not hitting all their shots, folks. The Cowboys can get back in this because Utah's not knocking them all down. French with it at the midcourt area. Looks top of the key, finds man. Left side, Young, for three. God! French with the basketball, left side on the wing to Washington. 20 on the shot clock to Roberts. He's double team, hands back to Mann, back to Geron. Puts one man in the air, in deep, but he's covered up by the man for three. God, Bradley Mann. The game was tied four more times after that. But following the last tie, Greg Sawyer hit a pair of free throws. Justin French converted a huge three-point play. And Bradley Mann hit two free throws to earn the Cowboys one of their biggest victories in years. Wyoming had added the Utes to the New Mexico win to become one of only three teams in the country to beat two top-ranked teams during the season. Utah became the second highest ranked team the Cowboys had ever defeated. St. Joseph's of Pennsylvania was ranked number two in the land when the Pokes beat them in 1965. The second game for the memory banks came a week and a half later when the Cowboys traveled to Fort Collins to battle Colorado State. Not only was the rivalry on the line, but so was the third seed in the conference tournament. The Rams had won the game in Laramie, and on their senior night, were the odds-on favorite to sweep the series and salt away that third seed. But, as was the case all season, the Cowboys defied the odds. Both teams, six team fouls with 7.37 to play, so both teams will be at the line for the rest of this half. Here's Udezaway, wanted to fire, now to French for three. That's good, oh. Justin French. Huge shot by Justin, and there was talk down here about how could a team be any good if it starts Justin French. Here's Ford for a 15-footer. That's around the rim and out, and Bradley Mann the rebound. That's the his second. Long lead pass up the floor. McFall, lean in, bank it up, couldn't get it to go. Follow up and in, lost it. Oh, nice job by Tone. He followed his man down the floor on that break, and he was right there in position to put that ball back in. It was Greg Sawyer's turn to carry his team. With almost 13 minutes left in the game, and the Cowboys down by five, Jerron Roberts picked up his fourth foul and had to come out of the game. The Cowboys could have folded, but Sawyer would not allow that to happen. During the six minutes that followed, he was magnificent. He made a steal. then scored seven of Wyoming's next 10 points. Man with it, couldn't get open to French, couldn't get his shot away, skips it over the zone to Sawyer, he'll try the three, God! He hit two free throws that sent the game into overtime. We played about 20 seconds here in the overtime and the Cowboys with their first offensive opportunity. Sawyer blasts down the lane, lays it up and in. There's the lead, that's the first lead and what a great cut to the hoop by Greg Sawyer. 20 points for the second time this season against CSU. Greg Sawyer, here's Young with it. McCanstry is coming to the game. Now Young from 18, that's good! Andy Young throws from just inside the three-point arc. Puts the Cowboys up by three. Here's Mahmoud quickly in the forecourt, no fouls, lean in, fires a right hand, that won't go. Tip no good, French punches it out toward the midcourt area. Time running out, this game is over. The Cowboys have won it in overtime in Fort Collins. They take over sole possession of third place in the Mountain Division of the Western Athletic Conference. 
Sawyer finished as the team's leading scorer with 20, including 14 in the second half. It was the type of magic that characterized the season and helped propel the Cowboys into postseason play. They earned an NIT berth facing Gonzaga in the double A, and while they lost the game, the fact they were in the postseason was an indication of where the program was heading. The magic certainly continued after the season was completed. Like magicians sometimes do, Larry Shiat disappeared from the cowboy program and was replaced by Steve McLean, a high energy, highly thought of young coach who won a national junior college title at Hutchinson Community College as the head coach and helped rebuild Texas Christian as an assistant. When I went to TCU, they had won seven games the year before we got there. And when they hired us to come in there, they hired us to build a program. And what happened last year here for this program was very exciting. But I think we said this is a start of a new chapter. Well, what was started last year was a start. What I'm going to do is finish the book. This program made huge strides in 1998 and laid a solid foundation for the future of cowboy basketball. Thanks to the magic conjured up by the Merlins of the Mountain.